Well hi guys this is Nikhil from Click CFA and today I will be taking you through dividend discount models. So I'll start with a single period dividend discount model. Let's assume that you buy Google and you hold that security for a single year. And within that one year what do you expect out of the Google stock? One is the capital appreciation. So let's assume that you bought Google at $1000 and you sold it for $1200. So you gained around $200 which is your capital appreciation. And on the other hand, Google must give you some dividends. Let's say if, if the company has a dividend policy, it gives you $20, which is around 2% dividend yield. So net net, what do you get is a $200 capital appreciation plus a $20 dividend from Google. So total return of $220 on $1000, which gives you 22% return. So for arriving at a fair value of Google, I'll just mark it for you. Let's assume the Google's price initially be 1000 and after one year Google's price be $1200 so you expect $200 capital appreciation and a $20 dividend which makes a dividend yield of around 2% on a thousand dollars investment. So these are the two cash flows which you would be getting in for the initial thousand dollars investment. So we need to discount both these uh, cash flows back to present to arrive at a fair value of Google. So the fair value of Google is the P1 discounted back to present plus the D1 which is your dividend discounted back to present. So this is what a single period dividend discount model tells you. Now question arises that what is this R and how are we discounting back the next year's price and dividend back to present with the help of R. Well R is nothing but the required rate of return from Google stock over the next period of one year. So I'll explain this in next slide. So let's say that R is RF plus beta of Google into return on market minus RF. So initially it sounds Greek but uh, I'll explain it. It's very simple formula. Once you're investing in a risky security, you expect a higher return, not a lower return. Because if let's say a Google stock return is not sure that whether it would give you more than the RF, you would never invest in it at the first place. If the RF is greater than your Google's investment, why would you invest in a uh, equity which has risk in it? So equities are always a greater risk investment. So you need to be compensated for taking that extra risk. You need to get an additional benefit over and above the risk-free rate. So let's assume that this risk-free rate is treasury bills rate and this the difference is risk premium which is a general risk premium in the market so let's say if you invest in an index based fund this is what you get over and above your treasury bills rate but since you are investing in one single stock which is Google you need to weigh this particular risk premium particularly with the beta of Google so what is beta Beta of Google, let's say if the number is 1.2, I'm not going into calculations as of now, which is a stats part, but uh, let's say uh, if the beta of Google is 1.2, if the market moves by $1, Google would move by $1.2. On the other hand, if beta is 0 0.8, it tells you that Google is less riskier than market. Basically, it moves less than the market. It moves around 80% of the total markets moment. So yeah, that's it. This is the R which we have calculated. We would be discounting back the price over the next one year plus the dividend back to present to arrive at a fair value of Google. And this is what a single period DDM does. So that's it for today. I'll be taking up Gordon Growth Model in the next module. Thanks.